Hi, and welcome back. Our summer has been jam-packed with traveling, but we're back now. And today's violin is a 1722 Stradivarius, nicknamed the Elmenstrad. At least that's what it was labeled at the museum, but it's actually the Joachim Elmenstrad. Now this is a really big deal because it means that it was not only played and owned by Misha Elman, but also by Joseph Joachim, who owned it until 1878 when the records for this instrument first began. Who owned it and played it for the first hundred years of its life, we're not sure. So because this instrument has such a rich history, I thought we'd take a look at it moving backwards. First we have Joseph Souk, who played this violin from 1981 to 1991. Souk was, and still is, a huge name in violin pedagogy and a brilliant performer as well. He was a Czech violinist and also the great-grandson of Dvorak. In 1973, it was owned by Israeli violinist Roni Rogoff, who is a wonderful musician and has an exceptionally rich sound. And I also happen to know him personally, so cheers, Roni. Thank you so much for taking great care of this instrument. From 1953 to 1970, it was part of the collection of Sam Bloomfield, a wealthy businessman from Kansas City, Missouri who retired as president of the Swallow Airplane Company and traveled the world collecting watches, guns, and violins. And now here we get to the really interesting bit. This instrument was owned and played by Misha Elman, the great Russian-Ukrainian violinist from 1907 all the way up to 1953. Elman was known for his rich, fat, sonorous tone, the type of tone that every violinist just strives to get. There are forums out there floating around on the internet devoted to the secret of producing the Elman tone. Was it his spectacular use of the bow arm? Was it the way that he emphasizes notes with his fingertips towards the nail? Or maybe it was the way that he always vibrated just a tiny bit sharp. There are all kinds of theories on the Elman tone, but we'll never know because we will never be Misha Elman. However, it's important to understand that the violin does not make the violinist. Elman had three strads, and on each of these glorious instruments, he still had this trademark Elman tone. So lastly, we're going to touch on the legendary Hungarian violinist Joseph Joachim. Joachim is like the grandfather of modern violin playing and pedagogy, and he owned this instrument until 1878, so into his mid-40s, when he'd already done some extraordinary work. Joachim was a pivotal figure in music history. He introduced Brahms to the Schumanns. He brought Beethoven's Violin Concerto back into favor after playing it under Mendelssohn's baton. He is largely responsible, along with Mendelssohn, for bringing Bach's violin works into the repertoire, especially the Chaconne. He wrote the cadenza for Brahms' Violin Concerto, and both Schumann and Dvorak's concertos were written for him. I mean, this guy did everything. He did it all, and he did it all on this instrument. And not only is his instrument still around, it's in gorgeous condition, and we're still playing the Chaconne on it. Mm -hmm. 
Now we've already looked at another Strad before, this 1713 Strad, and I have a few more stashed away in the to-do pile. So we still have plenty of episodes to look at what makes a Strad a Strad. But I did want to say that this instrument is just the height of elegance. It has a refined, mellow, gorgeous tone. Its responsiveness is unparalleled. It just melts under your fingertips. It's one of my favorites. But a part of what makes these violins so interesting is that they're hundreds of years older than us. And every person that has lived with this instrument has left their own imprint on it, left a little part of themselves. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and learning a little bit more about the history of this instrument specifically. We'd also like to send a huge thanks to the Chimay Museum for allowing us into the archive and giving us access to their amazing collection. We'll be sending out more videos soon. To the commenter who mentioned they'd like to hear Rogerius next, I promise I'll get on that. Thank you for commenting. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. And cheers! We'll see you next time. It even helps me remember the Chacon, <laughs> which I haven't played in two years. <laughs>